Welcome to part two of working with the console in Studio One 3. If you are a new user to Studio One uh, or working with mixers, then you probably want to go to part one and watch that first. Otherwise, you're going to kind of see this and it's going to look like a hot mess and things may be a little bit confusing. So if you're familiar with Studio One, then go ahead and stick around and let's go ahead and get started. Let's continue on with the uh, console options and we can access these with this little wrench icon here in the left corner of the console. I'll go ahead and click and the first option that we have here is keep effects channels to the right. And this is basically going to, whenever we create an effects channel, it's gonna keep it over here to the right in the console. If I deselect this, then I'll go ahead and select this first Mojito instrument track, and then I'll add an effects channel. Then as you can see, this pops up right next to the track or channel that I had uh, highlighted. But we'll go ahead and remove that out and turn this back on. Keep bus channels to the right. This is gonna function in the same way, but it's gonna apply to our bus channels. And these are all active by default. I haven't made any adjustments here. Keep VCA channels to the right. Again, this is gonna function the same as what we just saw with the uh, effects channel. Preserve order of channels with folder track. Again, this is checked by default and you wanna have this checked to have any bus channels that are associated with a folder track up in your arrange uh, view remain next to the folder tracks. Enclose channels. If you have the uh, keep bus channels to the right. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so basically, if you have, say, a folder track in the range view that has, say, eight drum tracks contained within it, then having, if you've got the bus channels to the right, but you would like for that particular bus channel to remain associated and close to those, uh, the folder track then you want to go ahead and keep that selected or go ahead and check that box, which is already checked by default. Next, we have visibility and a link show hide of track list and console. Now for this, to the left here, we have our channel list. And if we click on these white circles, then we're going to hide. Say if we want to hide the mojito, then it, that hides and then up in our track column, it goes away as well. So I'll deselect the Mai Tai. That's the, our track for Mai Tai. Mai Tai is here. I'll deselect that. And then they're both gone. So basically that, that option is gonna tie them together. Uh, the tracks that are associated with the channels. And so I'll go ahead and return those. And if I were to come over here to the track list, then if I deselect here, then you can see they're also removed within the console. I'll go ahead and hide that track list. The next option that we have is colorized can channel strips. So if we check that, then I'll uncheck it really quick. So by default, it's off and we can see that the track color basically is on the name here. So if I click once and make this this deep red or crimson, whatever, um, then it's just the track name that's going to be that color. If I come to the options and choose to colorize the channel strip, then the whole strip will be that color. Then we have show VCA connections. This will display VCA fader connections below the meter on each channel. And you can also assign or deassign a channel to any VCA available. And at the very bottom here, we have show audio device controls. Uh, the manual doesn't actually mention anything about this, but I believe this may be if you have a Personas audio device. I know those will provide some extra functionality within the console, and um, I think that that's what that is for. 
Now we've got several different panels in the con console which all have different functions and can help you with uh, being productive in Studio One and when you're working on your, on your mixes. Each of these can be shown or hidden and they are the input, output panels, trash bin, external, and instruments. And let's just take these one by one. And we touched on the, or we covered the input and output panels uh, in part one, but we'll briefly go over these again. So the input, if we select that, then we're going to see meters for the physical inputs on our audio device. And we can see the um, meter levels there and monitor. We can also double click and then add, say, a compression if we want compression on the incoming signal um, and just double click click to close that the outputs nothing's gonna happen for me because I only have two outs if you have an audio device that has more than two outs and you've made those active within the audio input output for your song they're gonna show up next to the main out here now we've got the trash bin and this is closed by default uh, as with the input and outputs and this is going to show a list of removed console objects including um, channels, virtual effects, and virtual instruments. Each of the discarded objects in the trash bin retains the exact state of the entire channel, effect, or instrument when it was uh, removed from the console and can actually be restored to the console as well. So I've actually got a mojito in here, but um, if I close out that trash bin, you can see I've got a Mai Tai and a mojito active. If I were to remove, I actually want to make this as clear as possible. So if if I open this up and then choose to remove it and then come to the trash bin you can see here's that one that I just removed now we can select that right click and actually we can delete it out of the trash bin or we can restore it I'll go ahead and restore it back and then now we can see that that's here and that is the trash bin. I'm going to go ahead and move this next to the other uh, instrument track. And I don't think I mentioned that in uh, part one, but we can select a track and drag it and move it wherever we'd like within the console. Next we've got external and uh, this is closed by default. This displays uh, any configured keyboards, external instruments, and control surfaces. So I've got a QWERTY keyboard set up and an MPK Mini set up. We can actually click this arrow down and edit our mapping for the device. We can also access the setup. We can also remove the device as well. And upper, up in the top corner here we can actually click that plus button to add a new external device and we also have this available to us uh, in the instruments here we can click that plus and then come in and add a, a uh, VST instrument in that way so I'll go ahead and close out that panel and finally we have instruments which is actually open by default and we can see that here we've already worked in here a bit we can double click and open up our instruments in this way we can click this down arrow uh, edit will just open it and we can expand out if our uh, instrument has more than a stereo pair as far as outputs are concerned we can ex choose this expand and then see those additional outputs we can rename the instrument bypass favorite or store its current settings as a preset, uh, disable, or remove. Now we've got a channel list here and this allows us to control which channels are visible within our console. So if we click this, we've already seen this actually a second ago, but if we click these white circles then we can remove tracks out or channels out of our console. Now if we're working on a large project we can actually set up different scenes 
So if we only want to see the drum tracks, or if we only want to see, um, say, a group of harmonies or the vocals, we can choose what's showing in the console and then use this plus button down here to save that as a scene. And I've actually saved a couple down here, and we use this arrow to choose. So if I choose audio tracks, this will just show us our audio tracks. If I come back down to this drop down menu and choose all tracks, then we're viewing all tracks. Okay, now if I deselect the bus and hide that, the effects, track one and track two, the audio, now we're left with two instrument tracks. If I click this uh, plus button, then I can instrument tracks, label that, and then choose OK. Now in our drop down menu, we see we have instrument tracks as a scene that is currently showing. If I want to get back to all tracks, then I can just choose that in uh, our audio and our instrument. And we'll go ahead and come back to all tracks. We also have a button for locking our active scene. The minus button will remove the currently active scene. Now we've got a couple different modes that we can use when we're working with the console. We have a large and a small mode, and these can be accessed by clicking this icon here. So if I go ahead and click once, we enter into a large mode where we can see our insert and send uh, racks up at the top. And I'm on a pretty small monitor here. The resolution is pretty low, so you'll probably see more than this uh, if you're working on a normal PC. But we can also come to the top here and adjust to show our inserts there. Um, and then in between here, we can adjust as well. Within the large mode, we can also come to an, apply a narrow mode by clicking this icon here. And then that's going to kind of shrink these down. And we have our meters up at the top. Mute and solo are above the level fader and panning. And if we'd like to expand the track out, then we could just click in an empty space, double click there, and open that up to access the functions, and double click again to shrink that back down. Now, if I take off the narrow mode, and return back to small mode, and then come back to our narrow mode, uh, we basically have the same thing. They're shrunk down. Our mutant solo and panning are above the faders. We don't have the meters up above, though. Those are, are next to our uh, faders. But we can, again, double click to expand out and access the functions on our channels. And I'll go ahead and return that back to normal size. And lastly, we have the option to detach our console. If we have a separate monitor, we can then drag that over there. And we can even maximize that or come to the borders and resize however we'd like. And then to reattach to the main interface, we can just click this down arrow and we're back as it originally was. And this will conclude our two-part series on using the console within Studio One Three.